When the fuel tank is filled with oil, the oil nozzle will automatically disconnect. I always thought there was an electronic sensor inside, but when I learned how it works, I was really shocked. The oil nozzle is actually a purely mechanical structure. So what is it? How does it work? To understand this problem, first let's understand the Venturi effect. This is a Venturi tube, thin in the middle and thick at both ends, and connected to U-shaped tubes everywhere. If you inject water into the middle tube and blow air at one end, you will definitely think that the liquid level on the left side of the U-shaped tube will be lower than on the right side, but the fact is exactly the opposite. Why? This is the Venturi effect. When the fluid flows through a reduced cross-section, the flow rate of the fluid increases, and its flow rate is inversely proportional to the flow cross-section. This was discovered by the Italian physicist Venturi, so it is called the Venturi effect. So why does the page go up? Here we have to mention Bernoulli's principle again. The greater the flow rate, the lower the pressure. Don't underestimate this pressure. Planes of several hundred tons fly because of this pressure difference. The wing of the aircraft is in the shape of a raindrop with a wide front and narrow back. It can be seen that the upper part of the wing has a higher flow speed than the lower part, which creates a pressure difference, thereby causing the wing to gain an upward force. Here's the key point to note. As the flow rate increases at the narrowing point, the pressure decreases, creating negative pressure in the U-shaped tube below, causing the page on the left to be higher than the page on the right. Look at the refueling nozzle again. The green tube is equivalent to the main pipe of the Venturi. The constricted part in the middle is the one-way valve in front of the nozzle. Since its opening is not large, it is equivalent to the narrowing of the pipe. There are several small holes on the valve. One pipe extends to the front end of the oil gun, and one pipe extends to the diaphragm at the rear. The lower end of the diaphragm is connected to the latch, and there are steel balls on both sides. This is like a bifurcated Venturi aluminum tube. The left branch tube is equivalent to the small hole on the gun mouth, and the right branch tube is equivalent to the rear diaphragm. When air is blown into the tube, since the left branch pipe is connected to the atmosphere, the pressure of the Venturi aluminum tube is equalized, so the liquid level does not rise. But when the pipe on the left is blocked, negative pressure will be generated in the pipe. Knowing this, let's take a look at how the refueling gun works. The staff presses the handle, and the lever opens the upper valve. The oil flows into the oil gun, opens the one-way valve, and enters the fuel tank through the nozzle of the gun. When the oil is not full, the small hole in front of the nozzle can suck air normally and balance the pressure of the Venturi tube. When the fuel tank is full, the oil blocks the small hole in the front, just like blocking the pipe on the left with your fingers. Negative pressure is generated in the pipe, the diaphragm shrinks upward, driving the latch upward, and the spring holding the steel ball falls, leaving the, the oil gun that reaches the fulcrum will automatically close. This is the principle of automatic disconnection of the oil gun. Have you ever dreamt of finding a toilet in your dreams? Or have you ever dreamt about a person in your dreams? Do you know how these dreams come about? Today we will list five kinds of common dreams. Let's see what kind of dreams you've had. Number one, falling dream. Dreaming of falling from a height or stepping on air. The body will involuntarily twitch. Many parents will tell their children, dreaming of falling from a height means you're going to grow taller. I've been looking forward to this kind of dream every day to grow taller. However, psychologically speaking, when a person falls into a deep sleep, the nervous system calms down. The brain recognizes these changes as signals of danger and wakes you up with dreams like falling. Two physical dreams. I'm sure when you were a kid you used to look for the toilet in your dreams. This probably means you have a current urge to urinate. If you find the toilet in your dream and solve the problem, it means you've already wet the bed. In fact, many people have this kind of dream, but some people wake up to go to the restroom and some solve it in their dreams. These dreams are also a reminder of our biological needs and our current situation. I don't know why we stopped having these dreams when we grew up. Number three, precognitive dreams. Have you ever had a feeling of real life about something, a place or a person, like you've dreamed about them before? The things you experience in your dreams that happen in real life are also known as precognitive dreams. Psychologists believe that the human brain can sometimes unconsciously to anticipate what's about to happen. Number four, lucid dreams. Many people have had this experience, knowing that they are dreaming while they are dreaming, for example. You dream about something that makes you very angry, and you knew it was a dream and you end up crying. This is called dream knowing in psychology. 
Some studies have shown that when people are dreaming, all areas of the brain remain awake. That's why the people and events you encounter in your dreams will feel very real to you in your dream number five, replay it dreams. Have you ever realized that there are always a few dreams that repeat in your sleep? If you often dream about the same scene, the same person, or the same thing, this kind of dream is called a replay dream. If you have this kind of dream, it means you have a knot in your heart. The brain is trying to convey important information that we ignore in reality. When the knot is cleared, the dream stops repeating itself. Psychologist Sigmund Freud wrote in his interpretation of dreams, Dreams are a true dialogue with one's inner self. It's a process of learning from ourselves and another life that is closely related to your own. So these five types of dreams, have you personally experienced? This is what really happened on camera. A little girl was leaning against a refrigerator when she was suddenly electrocuted and her body tensed up and she couldn't move. Her head tilted back unconsciously while the little girl's father just focuses on the phone, completely unaware that the child has been electrocuted. Time passed by. When the store owner opened the refrigerator, the child collapsed with a thud. Only then did the father realize. But the little girl had already been electrocuted. And there are many similar tragedies in our lives. So how does electrocution lead to death? When electrocution, how to save yourself and rescue. Generally speaking, electrocution is when the human body touches an electrically charged body. Arc discharge between the charged body and the human body. When the current flows through the human body into the ground or into other conductors to form a circuit phenomenon, the safe voltage of the human body is within 36 volts. If the current exceeds the safe value for human beings, it can lead to respiratory distress and heart muscle weakness. This leads to ventricular fibrillation. It stops the blood circulation in the whole body. When the blood circulation stops, it will cause a lack of oxygen to the brain tissue. Within 10 to 15 seconds, you lose consciousness. After a few minutes, the nerve cells become paralyzed and die. Therefore, it's important to get out of the electrocution situation and start emergency treatment. In general, if a minor electric shock causes numbness in the hands and blackness in the eyes, will soon recover on its own. In the case of severe electrocution, there is no one nearby to help. You must remain calm and try to save yourself quickly. If you come into contact with a wire swinging in the air, the electrocuted person can use the other hand to grasp the insulation of the wire, quickly pull the wire out, get rid of the electrocuted state. When the electrocution of electrical appliances is installed in the wall and other fixed positions, the electrocution can be avoided by stomping the body backward. But if you find an electrocuted person, do not touch the electrocuted person with your hands. First of all, quickly cut off the power or use an insulated object to disconnect the electrocuted person from the power source. The longer the electric shock lasts, the greater the damage. You know that people do not lose consciousness in the first few seconds after being electrocuted. If the little girl at the beginning of the video jumped up so that the current lost conductive lines, or if the adults next to her had realized in time to help, perhaps the tragedy could have been avoided. When you were a fetus, do you know what you did every day in your mom's belly? Did you think you only ate, drank, and slept every day? Actually, that's not true. At that time, you had to do at least eight things every day in your mom's tummy. First of all, swallowing amniotic fluid. The fetus swallows amniotic fluid in the womb, mainly because amniotic fluid can serve as a cushion and reduce external stimuli. In addition, swallowing amniotic fluid can train the fetus's swallowing ability in advance. In preparation for breastfeeding after birth. Second, swimming. From the second month of pregnancy, we are all immersed in amniotic fluid. It's a big warm pool for us. That's why we learn to swim in the amniotic fluid when we're still fetuses. That's why newborn babies keep swimming. Third, play with the umbilical cord. In the womb, the umbilical cord becomes the fetus's only toy. When the baby's fingers are mature, 
The umbilical cord is the only toy for the fetus. Some fetuses even wrap the umbilical cord around themselves. If playing with the umbilical cord causes discomfort, they will let go of the umbilical cord forth, holding the fingers. When the fetus is tired of playing with the umbilical cord, they will instinctively put their fingers in their mouths. This is also the reason why many babies like to eat their fingers after birth. In fact, it's an instinct developed in the mother's womb. Fifth, listen to the outside world. When the fetus reaches 24 weeks, the sense of hearing has matured. It can hear all kinds of external sounds. Sometimes it can also eavesdrop on mom and dad through the belly. So don't say anything bad about your baby or he'll kick you in the stomach. Sixth, exercise after the 28th week of pregnancy. The baby starts to stretch itself with both hands and feet. If you look closely at the mother's belly at this time, you can still see the baby's movements. Seventh, hiccups or yawns. The fetus lives in the amniotic fluid. Sometimes he chokes on the amniotic fluid and hiccups. And sometimes the amniotic fluid is partially ingested by yawning. But it doesn't matter. The mother's amniotic fluid is nourishment for the baby. At this time, the baby's respiratory and digestive systems are basically formed. Hiccups and yawns are inevitable. And finally, sleep. During the first three months in the mother's womb, the baby sleeps almost all day long and in the darkness of the womb. It's probably the best sleep a baby has ever had in their life. Whenever they're tired of playing, they'll fall asleep peacefully and the sound of their mother's heartbeat is the most beautiful lullaby they'll ever hear.